with the director to kind of realize this incredible documentary? Sure, so just to tell you a little bit about myself, I've lived in Japan for 17 years and I also directed documentaries. And a lot of the documentaries that I do have to do with health and medicine in Japan. And so I met um, Adrian, who is the DOP of this film, and we, he was also a, a foreign filmmaker who had been living in Japan for like 10 years, and we wanted to do a collaboration together. And I told him, um, he asked me if I had any ideas, and I had been to one of these clubs we were looking at uh, doing a film about a trans person who um, brought us to one of these clubs um, during the interview process. And it had kind of really made a big impression on me because uh, we had gone to a very small bar, like maybe 15 people could fit in the bar, and there were like 10 bartenders behind the counter, and I was like, that's a really strange ratio. <laughs> um, and as it turns out, they weren't bartenders. Um, and that kind of stuck with me, and so I told him this story, and um, so we, we decided that we would try to see if we could get access to this um, world. And so uh, he and I spent about a year just going to the going to the bars and trying to develop a relationship with the managers and the owners of, the, of these clubs to try to um, see if this was something that we could pursue. And then it was later that we brought on Itako, the director, um, and then he collaborated with the musicians and the animator and illustrator to kind of um, really shape um, the vision of how these stories would be told because it was very, um, it was in some ways claustrophobic because the interviews were filmed in those sex rooms. And um, as a team, we knew from the beginning that we didn't want to film the guys with um, any customers. And so we um, were brainstorming how could we kind of bring the audience into the, into the world that these guys are describing in a way that was um, respectful and it was illustrating what they were saying without trying to editorialize it. And so that's really what, what he did when he was working with, uh, with the illustrator. I was, speaking of illustrated, I was so taken with the animation, and I do think it kind of alleviates some of that kind of claustrophobia you're talking about. At what point did you decide to integrate animation, a kind of illustrated uh, aspect to the, the documentary? How did that kind of creative idea come about? So, uh, the, so Adrian, the, the director of photography, came up. You know, he was kind of. We were talking about what, how are we going to do this, and um, I had a friend who uh, had written a novel that was turned into a graphic novel, and it was uh, as a gay themed film. Uh, excuse me, gay themed novel. And so there was a, a manga, a, a graphic novel of this novel, a graphic novel of the novel. And uh, so we talked to him, and, and we got permission from his publisher to utilize those graphics. Um, but because those were graphics that had been drawn for another story, there was this disconnect between those, what they were depicting and the story that we were telling. And so uh, the director asked if we could commission original work, and my heart just kind of sank, because I was also, I funded the film as well. And so I was just thinking, oh my god, how much is it going to cost? <coughs> and uh, yeah, that was the producer for me. So it's been a, this is the first one film that I produced, and so that was a really big learning experience for me as well. Um, but I also felt like my job was to try to bring his vision to the screen. Um, and so we contacted an illustrator who, uh, she was commissioned to do, I think we originally did 300 kind of drafts, like pencil drawings. And then he kind of placed them into the film and was working with, you know, how they're gonna work and things. And then eventually um, she, he, he chose 100 of them, 100 sequences to, to be uh, drawn. And so we had those done. Um, and then later it was, it, it was kind of too much, it was too many, and so then we scaled back again. So I think there's probably 34 or something sequences in there. Um, one of the very interesting things was that, um, so she's a, a, a young Japanese um, artist, and she had not uh, seen the, she told, me this, she told me a story later, we were out doing a private screening for the staff uh, of the film and for the people that appeared in the film. And she told the story at this private screening that when she was first commissioned, she was really excited about it, but that she had never seen the naked body of a 70-year-old man. And so she didn't sort of know how to draw that. And so she spent the first weekend sort of like um, researching, um, like Googling naked 70-year-old man body. <coughs> and, but in, in Japan, um, most pornography is blurred out. And so she couldn't see the vital parts. And so then she's like, oh, I have to do this in English. So then she's like, you know, typing in English terms and, and finding it online. Um, but uh, she said that she felt that one of the things that she, well, her approach was that, that, um, that she wanted to, 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 she felt her job was to illustrate what these guys were, were, were describing and that she felt that because she herself wasn't sexually aroused by what she was trying, that she hoped that she was able to bring a kind of um, realism to what they were saying and, and that it wouldn't be sort of 
um, gratuitous. Yeah, it's really, it's incredible. All right, I'm not going to take up any more time. I would love to open it up to the audience. I'm sure you guys have questions. Yes, right in the back. Uh, I noticed the captions that mentioned this being the international version. What's the difference between the international version and, I guess, the domestic version? That's a really great question. Um, so we worked with two um, narrative editors, so it's one story editor and one narrative editor, and they were helping to develop what does an international audience need to know and what, what information they need to know and in what order they need to know in order to understand the story. Um, and we felt that, that that was different from um, what a Japanese audience would, would be bringing to the film already. What, what did they not need to have explained to them? Um, and so that was our approach, and he, the director worked with these two um, story editors to, to develop that. Um, and in the end, we actually have come, right, right now we don't have a Japanese release, which I can talk about in a minute, um, because we've, we're having difficulty getting it screened in Japan. Um, but as of right now, the, the idea was that we would do this kind of international version for the International Film Festival circuit, and that we would then go back and, and work on, on the, the domestic version. And right now, we don't actually plan to do that. So we, it was something that we thought we needed to do, and, and maybe the, the few test screenings that we've done in, in Japan uh, for small Japanese audiences, it's, it seems to be working okay. So it's, it's quite possible that, that that won't be relevant, that this will be the version of the film. So I know I said I was going to open it up, but now I really want to piggyback on that question. What have been the difficult? why hasn't it screened in Japan? What are kind of the difficulties of getting it screened there and, and having a, a... Sure. I mean, it's always hard to know when you, when you don't get selected for a film festival because sometimes they just don't year, or I mean, it's all, maybe it's not a good film, I mean, there could be any number of reasons. Um, I, re I just got, a re we, just, we just got a rejection from a uh, film festival, so very often you don't know the reason, uh, but this festival offered you the opportunity, if you want to know why, please let us know, and we'll give you the feedback from the, from the judges. Um, and the, the comment was very, very short, and it said, um, inter interesting topic, um, but, not something that sh but, but not something that should be screened at, at a film festival. And I was thinking, it was really interesting, and I thought, is it, I thought, not, maybe it's not good for our film festival. I'm like, okay, great, fine, sure, but not, not to be shown at a film festival. I thought, there are, there are 24 film festivals that would disagree. We um, disagree. Thank you, thank you. Um, anyway, so it's hard to, it's hard to know. Um, but we, we submitted to three um, big uh, festivals in, in Japan. All three of them turned it down, um, including the Tokyo uh, International Gay and Lesbian Film Festival. And the reason, there were two reasons um, that we were given. One was because there's only uh, two slots for domestic features because it's an international film festival. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, how many gay features do you have in Japan each year? I mean, there aren't that many. I mean, there are a couple this year, but not, I mean, not tons. Um, and, and the other one, um, so, so I have a, I shouldn't probably tell this story, but nobody's recording this, right? I have another friend who's um, a, 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 um, a programmer from another festival who comes to festivals in Japan to program Japanese films. And he talked with the director of that film festival. And he said, they, he, this director said to him in a private conversation, which I'm now repeating in public, um, said, <laughs> said, but I mean, it's not really a Japanese film. I mean, Ian's involved in it. And I thought, wow, that's such a narrow definition of, of I mean, of, of, of the nationality of a film, because it is a Japanese film from a Japanese director in the Japanese language, financed with Japanese money. And when we screen in, I mean, I happen to be American, but when I screen the, my, the films I'm involved in in America, they screen as international films. So um, that was a disappointing thing to hear. I mean, the, the, the people behind the camera shouldn't qualify what, you know, what what the nationality and the tone of a film is. I mean, right, there's tons of um, foreign people that direct Hollywood films, and they're Hollywood films, so, yeah. All right, next, next question. Yes, right there, Senator. Hi, I live in Japan and dated Ken Mitsuda for three years. Uh, Ken is a dragon. I do know Dragon. Yeah. In fact, Dragon is, that's where he said was, yeah, yeah. filmed. Um, and I'm not surprised that, I mean, it's been a decade since I've spent a lot of time there, but the combination of the xenophobic nature of Japan, which is very really close to outsiders, and yeah. the Britishness around sex, and the fact that I presume it hasn't changed because you can't show pubic hair, uh, you know, legally. Uh, the combination, I'm not surprised you got shut out. Uh, the question I have is, you know there are only several bars, Artie Party, um, GB's, Dragon, et cetera, that welcome Westerners. I was surprised that this club seems to cater to both Western and Japanese, they don't, there's no distinction. So the question is about um, catering to both Western people and Japanese people as far as the Udi bars are concerned. Um, 
So there are, there are, I mean, there's probably, um, I mean, it, it changes because there are some Udizen bars that, that operate only as Udizen bars, and then there are other bars that are technically just bars that happen to offer Udizen. So it's, very, so, but the number of bars that, that specialize only in Udizen is about 12. Uh, and there are some that, that don't prefer to have foreign people there. Um, and the ones, obviously, that we were working in, you know, they, they do allow foreign people. And I would suggest that, you know, I mean, the money is still the same color. Um, and so they, it, is, it is a business decision as well. Um, and some of these uh, bars even have English language websites. And when you look for directions, how to get to the bar, one of them is, um, it's, so normally you would think, like, how to get there from the station, right? Like, from like, the nearest station. One of them has directions how to get there from the air airport. <laughs> and so, you know, there are people who come for the weekend. as well and it's about how much we as a film crew educated the guys about about what it was that they were doing when they clearly didn't work being trained um, you know I it is it is a great question and it's and it's a difficult question as well um, the entire crew our, we had a very small crew but we were all very affected by what we were hearing and we always, whenever possible, would, would tell people, tell them to be safe and to take care of themselves. And if the question is, did we sit down with them and, and, and teach them everything, the answer is no. Um, because there just isn't the time. There wasn't the time. And, and I also don't know that I would be able to teach, accurately teach a sex worker how to protect themselves and how to protect their clients. I think that's a very... Uh, specialized field, and, and when you're talking about sex work, people who are engaging in sex work as a career and are trained in how to do that, it's, it's a very uh, different conversation than I would be capable of having. Um, we did talk about the use of condoms and about protecting yourself, and um, one of the things, one of the unfortunate things is, is that some of these guys didn't even possess the vocabulary to even understand some of those conversations. Um, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with somebody who doesn't even know what HIV is or what STDs are or how they're transmitted or the fact that men can get them as well, it's very difficult to say, you know, to explain why it's not safe to brush your teeth before you engage in unprotected oral sex, for example. Um, we are screening the film next month uh, ahead of World AIDS Day. Uh, there is a um, Tokyo AIDS Week, which is a series of events that's being held by NPO, and the NPO uh, who is in the film as well as part of that, and they've asked to screen the film. And so there is going to be a, it's going to be followed by a panel discussion, which is going to be a group of experts that are uh, able to have those conversations and to talk about it. Um, and I mean, it, you know, to be honest, as, as filmmakers, it's maybe not the Japanese premiere that we had been hoping for, but we're also, as a team, of people that also want to raise awareness and to educate. We are really, really thrilled that we're going to be part of this event. Um, but as filmmakers who are often accused as of being activists, um, it's it's also difficult for us because the people that are going to come to Tokyo AIDS Week events are people that already are going to have some level of understanding. I mean, because they're choosing to go to that kind of event, and so the question then becomes, how do you reach the people who don't know that it's an issue? Are we have time for just a few more questions? Yes, all the way in the back. Yes, the orange. I So this is another, and this is actually something that was filmed. So the question is about the legality between sex, uh, selling sex between men and women and selling sex between men and men. So the law, as it says in the film, the law, the anti-prostitution law defines um, uh, prostitution as selling of sex between men and women. And so 
the question then becomes why why is sex between men not mentioned in the law? Um, you know, is it the case that they simply thought men wouldn't do that? You know, and so it's just, it just doesn't happen to be mentioned, which is not the case. Um, and so we had a researcher who was interviewed for the film, but then later we decided that it just it was it was kind of a, a whole other theme that sort of didn't fit in, into this version of the film. Um, but he was researching about the anti-prostitution law after World War II when it was being debated, and found found the record of debate, and it was actually debated uh, in Parliament. So should we should we include the definition as being between two men as well? It was intentionally not included. Can you guess why? <laughs> I'm sorry? It, it is the obvious reason. It's because the politicians go there too. Okay. All right. We have time for one last question. Who would like to ask the very last question? That's right. There. This is not so much a question. It was a very powerful film, but the description uh, in the and the material suggests a film that would be awkward, sweet, and sometimes hilarious. And it's it's a very powerful film, but it's it's it kind of the description doesn't do it justice. Thank you. I, I, I don't disagree. In fact, um, that description is, isn't an excuse, but it was written uh, by someone else. We've adapted it now. So I, did, I actually, until you just mentioned it, I didn't realize that was the version that was in, the, um, in this program. Um, the version that we changed the word hilarious to horrific, um, which I think actually is more accurate. Um, I think it's always a fine line between trying to accurately represent a film, and that includes the still that you use and the description, and then trying to get people to come to the, to the, you know, trying to sell tickets. And that's a really difficult thing to do. Um, and, but my hope is, is that people would, would feel like they're seeing the film that was described to them. And so I, I do, it, particularly if, you're, if your comment is about the word hilarious, for example, I would, I would agree with you that that doesn't accurately reflect. I think there are funny moments. I don't think there's any moments of hilarity. But there are certainly moments of, of horrificness. Thank you for your comment. And enlightening, I mean, that's another word that, you know, it, it's, it, it sheds light on the story. You, you, at least if we're a Western audience, we're not aware of, so, you know, we're so thankful for your film and for, you know, showing it to this audience who I'm sure have not seen a story like this. So thank you so much, Ian, for being here, for answering your questions. Thank you guys so much for asking such great questions. Thank you, Mary, for being here as well. Please don't forget to vote for the audience award. Thank you guys so much for coming. Yeah, and thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. I just really want to say that, it, you know, you guys are programming wonderful films. It's a wonderful experience, but it isn't just about the films. It's about coming together. It's about being in the Filmmaker Lounge and about having these Q&As and meeting people in the lobby. And, um, you know, I live in Japan, and I've come here for this. And my dad, who's here, uh, you know, lives on the East Coast and came. And so he's a 76-year-old retired priest. And, you know, and is here at a gay and lesbian film festival. And if I could have like just two minutes to a really quick story. So we were at the um, North American premiere was at Outfest in Los Angeles a couple months ago. And so my dad comes and it's his first gay and lesbian film festival. And so he's got to go to the bathroom. And, you know, all the bathrooms are like all inclusive, you know, and it has like a big sign on it. And it's like these are gender neutral bathrooms. And so he's really supportive, but he's also does not really sure what that means. And so he's, but he's really got to go to the bathroom. So he's like looking at the, the sign and thinking, you know, I wonder what's going to be going on inside the bathroom. And he opens the door and it's a bathroom with people using the bathroom. And he came back out and he told us the story. And I just thought, you know, it's, it's such an amazing experience. To, to, it's offering an opportunity for people to just meet other people and to learn things and to experience things. And it's not really directly about films, but it's about the education that festivals like this bring to people. And so I just want to thank you very much. And it's really deep in my relationship with my dad, being able to be here. So thank you very much for, for your support and for offering us this opportunity. Yes, that